Good day everyone. How are you guys doing today? I know some of you love camping and others you've just been thinking about camping but you really don't know how to do it. Today we are going to take you inside and we are going to show you camping skills, things that you need to know to get the maximum benefit from your walk with nature and your living outdoors. So stick with me as we go inside we're going to meet the presenters and they're going to take us through a whole list and array of things that we have to know before we go camping come on let's go in cold weather camping joseph the son of jacob was not liked by his brothers they decided to kill him later they decided to sell him. David, uh, Joseph suffered a lot. He was sold to the Egyptians. In Egypt, he was so fortunate to work for Potiphar, one of the Egyptian generals. Unfortunately, Joseph failed and refused to fulfill the demands of Potiphar's wife. And Joseph was accused, and Joseph was arrested, and Joseph was thrown in prison. Joseph was a man who suffered a lot. Camping in winter is camping between death and life. It's different from camping in summer, where it's warm. Precautions must be taken seriously, because anyone can die in that situation. Let me start with the emergencies that we might encounter in the cold weather camping. Hypothermia. Hypothermia is when the rate at which the heat is generated is lower than the rate at which the body is losing the heat and hence we suffer from hypothermia. There is mild hypothermia, there is moderate hypothermia, and there is severe hypothermia. With mild hypothermia, you find patient or the victim is shivering when the board is trying to warm itself naturally. You find it's very cold. How to treat someone suffering from hypothermia? Mild hypothermia. You start by giving the person, take the person inside the tent. Make sure that the person is wearing warm clothes. Give the person warm fluids and let the person wear warm clothes. Moderate hypothermia and severe hypothermia. Severe hypothermia is now threatening one to death. Quickly call for assistance. You cannot make the person drink any fluid because he's unconscious. Add warm clothes and let the person go inside the tent if there is a tent and go inside the sleeping bag. If you have enough sleeping bags, use the lock together sleeping bags 
and let the person sleep inside the sleeping bags with someone as a way of warming my body. Boil water, put water in a hot water bottle and place it in the sleeping bag as a way of trying to warm up. Get warm pads and put them underneath the armpits so that the blood, the warm blood will flow slowly into the whole part of the body. As fast as you can, try to warm, to warm him up before the cold reaches this, uh, the core center of the body. Also use warm uh, pads to warm the groins as the blood is flowing across the body. That's hypothermia. Also, be careful of dehydration. Dehydration happens in a hot condition. It, it can also happen in a cold condition. Why it can also happen in the cold condition? Because you'll be losing water, uh, water from the body through sweating and through the cold. And normally, people don't drink water when it's cold. When someone is suffering from dehydration, give him as much warm water as possible up until he has recovered. Then there's frostbite. Frostbite, some of the symptoms of frostbite are the color of the skin becomes pale. And you also find the color of the nose becomes pale. So when someone is suffering from snow bite, warm the, po uh, the points. If it is the nose, try to warm the nose. If it is the palms, try to warm the palms. But don't rub them because you'll be worsening the situation. These are the possible emergencies that we normally incur when we are camping outside in the cold weather. Let's go back to our food. You have to prepare to take as much food as you can. The food which can generate heat for you because in winter or in cold weather, you burn more calories to keep your body warm and to keep your body fit. So you need a variety of food. And you go to your tent, choose an all season tent or the tent which enables to endure and keeps warm during harsh weather conditions. Other tents are written that they can go as low as 5% degrees Celsius. That's the tent that you need to take with. Then you go to your sleeping pad, ground pad. On your ground pad, you need a closed cell ground pad. Why a closed cell ground pad? You might even need two. Why? Because a closed cell ground pad is an insulator. It retains heat to the sleeper. And it's comfort. It's very comfortable. When you are sleeping at night, before you go for sleeping, go for an exercise to warm your body, then you go straight into sleeping. Wear warm clothes. Could be your pajama, it could be your jazz in your bottom. Don't make a mistake to sleep without clothes. 
at times you might need to warm water and put a warm a bottle of water in your sleeping bag as a way of getting warm. It's ideal to sleep together so that you warm each other. Types of sleeping bags. This, when you are choosing your sleeping bag or buying your sleeping bag, check the information on your sleeping bag. The material your sleeping bag is made up of, the degrees and the weight of your sleeping bag. The sleeping bag, it might be cheaper, it might be expensive, but what I can encourage you is buy an expensive quality sleeping bag because it saves your life. Rather save your life by buying something expensive and the right thing than trying to save money by buying something cheaper which leads to your early death. The types of sleeping bags. Don't use cotton. A sleeping bag from summer. Sleeping bags, they are not compulsory which one you want, but buy the right one, the one that you want. They are rectangular sleeping bags with a drawstring on the net, on the neck, which traps the heat inside. So you find that the sleeping bag has got three parts. It's got the inner part, others they are polyester, others they are cotton. The cotton ones are not ideal. Why? Because once they get wet, they cause a lot of cold, which can lead to death. So the inner lining is polyester. Then this one has got double innings. Thick this side and thick this side. Others, they use the dawn. Others, they use the synthetic. And others, they use cotton. But cotton one is not ideal. The dawn one, which are the phase of the goose and the dust, Ducks are the right one. They are very warm. Only that when they are wet, they are heavy. Synthetic, it's warm, it's light, and when it's wet, it also dries quickly. Then there are sleeping bags which come with the wood. Normally, this side, we call it the cow. It comes with the wood and the, do, the drawstring. So you'll find the inner part is polyester and it has got the filling and the outer, which is the shell, is water repellent. Water and moisture repellent. It's degrees. This one goes to minus five degrees Celsius. And this one in this shape, the mummy, it uh, takes the shape of your body. It quickly traps uh, warmth and is very warm. It comes with the drawstring, the inner material, double uh, lining, the outer end. It allows your legs to stay inside here where they are kept warm. And at times, you might use two sleeping bags when the weather is too harsh. How to dress for winter or for weather? Never, ever use cotton. Cotton kills. Never ever use jeans and cordros because they kill. How do they kill is once they get uh, wet, 
they draw warmth from the body. Hence, your chances of suffering from hypothermia is very high. So you don't need to pack anything of cotton when you are going for cold weather camping. Go for synthetic, nylon, and wool. Wool is the only garment, is one of the, uh, the only garment which retains heat when it's wet. So you need wool. The only disadvantage with wool is when it's wet, it's heavy. But nylon and the synthetic are also very important. When you buy your jacket, you have your jacket with its lining. Your jacket must be breathable, water repellent, and water resistant. That's your jacket. Before we go much into the jacket, let me, start, uh, let me explain again base layer. What is a base layer and the importance of the base layer? Before you start wearing, you start with your base layer. Your base layer, the top and the bottom. Find that your base layer retains heat to the body. This one is called a vapor transmission. It has got a vapor transmission system. What does that mean? It wicks moisture or vapor from the board and it passes it to the outer layer and leaves the body dry and warm. It has got an ability of preventing the effect of ultraviolet rays. It keeps the body cool when it's warm, and it keeps the body warm when it's cold. It has got the ability to reduce unpleasant odors. When you are wearing, you start with your base layer. Your base layer on your socks and on your gloves, and on your top and your bottom. Your, ba your base layer helps you to wick the moisture from your board and transfer it to the outer to the middle layer. Your best layer, like this one, is also called a vapor transmission layer. It wicks the vapor from the board, transmit it to the outer. It has got an ability to protect you from ultraviolet rays. It prevents your body from odor, smells. It also retains all the heat back to your body. Then you have your gloves. There's glove, uh, the lining, glove lining, then you wear your gloves. Mostly, you get the cold through your fingers and your palm, also through your feet. So you need to have socks, the lining, use nylon, and don't use cotton. Cotton also causes some blisters. Use nylon or wool. Also use warm shoes with the inner warm lining. Your head, your head gear is very, very important. We lose more than 90% of our body heat when it's cold through our head. So we need to cover our head always with different types of head gears. There are some heads with the inner lining, which is 
at, which retains heat to the head. Then we have the monkey head. Normally, when it's cold and you did not cover your head, you normally experience headaches. Why? Because of the heat loss from the body. When you finish wearing your inner lining, then you wear your middle lining, which means in winter wearing or in cold weather wearing, we use layer wearing. We wear in layers. Let's take for instance, someone is wearing a thick jacket when it's cold. It's not as effective as layer wearing. So you start with best layering, wearing. From the best, then you wear a t-shirt or a winter shirt. Then you wear a jacket, a fleece on top. There are some jackets designed, designed in such a way that they come with their fleece jacket. Then you wear the outer layer. Some outer layers, they are water repellent. The outer layers, they are water repellent with the fleece material inside. Suppose you are feeling cold, you wear everything. And once you start feeling warm, you remove the top one. And it's getting warmer, you remove the middle layer up until you remain with your shirt or your T-shirt. As you start feeling cold, you reverse the process. You wear your shirt, you wear your fleece jacket, or you wear your, your jersey, you wear your fleece jacket, then you wear your outer layer, which is water repellent. Others, they also come with a wood. They come with a wood. In your camping, the most difficult thing to do when it's cold is to make fire. Never touch a hot pot with bare hands when it's cold because you won't feel the heat but you get, you get bent. Always touch by the handle. In winter or in cold weather conditions, cooking is affected because there is a high heat loss through the altitude will also affect the wind will also affect the distance between the flame and the pot will also affect. So it is recommended that when you are going for such camps, rather take two stoves. In case one is not working, you use another one. Take an extra or two extra canisters of gas in case they are not working. When you are packing for backpacking, when you are packing for your winter, rather use the backpack. Because when you use the backpack, when you carry your backpack on your back, you close The reason why you have to carry your backpack, put everything in the backpack, the backpack hugs on your back and it stays closer to your center of gravity. And it's easy to maintain balance as you'll be walking. Also, don't forget your hiking poles. They also help you to maintain the balance. As you'll be walking, 
and shivering. They also help you to maintain the balance. That's cold weather camping. I hope you have learned a lot. I hope there's still a lot that you have to learn. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for everything that you have learned. May God bless you. Thank you very much.